<clears throat> we now have about 20 minutes for Q&A. And um, if Dr. Schwenk and uh, Dr. Lienau are, are available, um, we'd love to involve them in the Q&A. So um, <clears throat> go ahead and post your question in the chat. And you can also unmute yourself if you'd like. And I also have a mic here for anyone. Great talk, Vinod. I have a question. In terms of the natural language processing, do you have access to um, progress notes um, within VA data, within the Arches platform? The way the process works, uh, Dr. Migrino, is that investigators who already have access to these notes, um, they have to get onto a process so that the notes that they already have access to can be approved to be aggregated into the innovations ecosystems environment. And once the notes make, uh, make it to that destination, then the MD Clone Adams platform can directly interact with those notes to get targeted information out and convert them into structured information. Do you know if any researcher or QI person has, uh, I guess, uh, imported Vista data into the platform? And clarify that question for me, Dr. Migrino. When you say imported Vista data, what domains of data are you? Sure. So. Um, within the electronic health records, the um, notes uh, as you know, unstructured data are reside in a Vista platform, uh, and uh, I believe uh, you can get permission to get that. And I wonder whether that is part of what um, is could be available within the Arches platform. Yes, you're, you're right. It's about proper approvals and permissions. Um, there's no barrier other than proper approvals for uh, co-locating those notes, copies probably, in the VA innovation ecosystem environment. And then the moment that happens, remember Dr. Linau mentioned that the innovation ecosystem is a walled playground. So the permissions would be needed to get into that space after which, and, and um, I'm happy to state that there are about two or three groups now that have begun to think about these possibilities, um, bringing in their notes that they, that they already have access to. All they need to do is get into a process whereby there's approval for bringing these notes into the VA innovation ecosystem environment. So uh, Dr. Marisa Domino has a question for Dr. Schwenke. I'm reading from the chat, and Marisa, you're welcome to unmute as well if you'd like. Uh, Dr. Schwenke, what are the costs for using the Vinci environment? Broadening this, can you provide the costs for all the platforms discussed for non-VA researchers? Um, I, I can only speak to Vinci. I, I haven't used the MD clone or the other platforms. So if one is approved to use Vinci, there's no cost. However, through the DART process, there will be a requirement for either an IRB approval and an R&D approval, or for preparatory for research, a letter or a form um, uh, attesting that the person is a VA employee and they wish the data to access the data preparatory to research and and uh, affirming that they won't download and things like that. So so there's no cost. It, it's just it's only available to someone who, who is uh, um, in uh, in detecting hierarchy a VA researcher. So that includes individuals who are VA paid, excuse me, VA paid employees and VA uh, and individuals who have a VA without compensation or WC appointment. So, so the, the without compensation appointment is essentially 
a mechanism that VA uses to vet an individual uh, to um, assure themselves uh, the VA that that it's safe essentially for the person to have access to VA resources. May I add to that, Dr. Davis? Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. Yeah. Does that answer the question? I think it does, but Vinod, go ahead and. Um... Dr. Schwenker, I'd like to add to what you said. Sure. And this is about uh, the costs for the MB Clone Adams platform. There's no cost for using the MB Clone Adams platform, and the process is simple. If you're interested and have a, a PIV card, which proves that you have, uh, uh, you know, identified, you've been identified at, at the VA. Mm -hmm. then all you need to do is submit an email request uh, stating that you are interested in using the platform and the access is instantaneous. All it takes is uh, for our customer uh, success partner to give you access. Um, and then you, you just um, go ahead and start your research design with support that's provided by us, which also has no cost. And, and frankly, most researchers don't need that much support uh, once they get into the platform. Uh, they, they start the process of evaluating feasibility of their research uh, or their quality improvement project. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Marisa. Wow, free and amazing. Thank you both. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, my question is for Dr. Swinsky. It's so nice to put a face to a name. I'm, I'm Jeanette Coffey, by the way. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Jeanette. I've been emailing you. Uh, my question is regarding the time frame. I know it may vary um, for non VA researchers, but what is the time frame to get access? I'm just trying to think strategically to plan research projects down the line. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. at the University of Arizona, I'm a, a postdoctoral research associate. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to plan strategically, what time frame should I be looking at um, if I do go the non-VA route to gain access to um, VINC or the CDW production data? Um, I would love that insight. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So by the non-VA route, I'm presuming you may need that you would seek a WOC appointment. Uh, so that takes a couple months, uh, and it, it's some forms that that uh, you would be required to complete, and then there's a background check done, and that that's probably the thing that is the most variable in length, uh, and then there's some training that would be required. Uh, VA it has certain training requirements, uh, and then but. Uh, simultaneously to doing that, you could certainly develop your project idea. Um, you you would need to have your WOC appointment before you could submit to the VI, VA IRB. But that's not to say that you couldn't have everything ready and uh, until you know wait until you have the walk appointment, then do the submission. Um, and and again, the the time through the review committees, the IRB. And uh, assuming that there's uh, this only uh, data study, so there's no laboratory issues, um, it, it it varies depending upon the person. Basically, depending upon how responsive they are to requests for uh, revisions, um, if if there are any that are needed. So so um, in in addition to the IRB paperwork, which is probably pretty similar to what you would complete. Um, at uh, U of A or any other university, there is the need for uh, a, a, a form that the privacy officer reviews uh, and another document that the information system security officer reviews. So, so that is uh, the, particularly the one for the information system security officer, that is the one that can be the most challenging for people. However, we have individuals in the research service that can help you. And, and certainly if you are using, uh, proposing to use VA data and it's in the VINCI platform, that's something that's easy for the information system security to sign off on. 
uh, because his job uh, is to make sure that the use, transport, and storage of VA data is in a manner that meets VA security requirements. And uh, accessing and using and analyzing and storing the data in Vinci is an approved VA solution. So um, that, that's a long answer of saying uh, the, the processes. So I would say, if you are responsive to respond, uh, requests for revision, uh, you should be able to, from the time of submission uh, of your IRB approval, uh, I mean, your, your documents for IRB approval, to the RMDC approval, which um, you, um, let me see now, uh, I'm thinking about when you can submit the DART. Um, uh, it, the, probably the total time from when you submit the IRB to when you get approval from DART uh, would be three to four months if you're responsive. Now, if you go on vacation and you know aren't able to respond to critique and you know miss a few periodic meetings or something like that, it's going to take longer. But but if you're really on top of things, you should be able to get it done in four months. And then Thank the walk so appointment, much. six to eight weeks. Thank you. Uh, hi there. Um, this is just a general question for any of you. Most of you mentioned demographic data would be included in the in the databases available. Um, I never heard a mention of racial data, and the reason I oh. ask this is because you know because you're stripping out a lot of other differences, sociological research like sociological health research, would mm -hmm. this would be like a really good source for that kind of research? No, uh, race I, and ethnicity data is definitely uh, available. Um, <clears throat> go ahead, Dr. Schwenke. Yes, it, it is definitely available. However, there is um, a fairly high uh, percentage, of, percentage of missingness. And that is to say, uh, individuals who choose not to identify uh, their race and ethnicity. So the way I've handled that in the past is, is just to consider that as another uh, race ethnic group, people who don't want to identify or don't want to be identified. So that's one approach uh, that may be less biased than just excluding people for which uh, race and ethnicity is not available. Other questions? So I don't know if this question is for individuals that can answer in the room, but I want to ask it anyway. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a military and veterans resilience and health collaborative conversation. And with all the data that's available now, we're thinking about running clinical trials or what have you. One of the larger hurdles that we always come across with VA um, in particular, or government entities in particular, is the time frame for approvals. Um, a lot of times what gets left out is the end goal of that is servicing veterans and also the service members, right? So if there's right. approvals on the, if there's slow approvals on the front end, ultimately those results affect veterans on the back end for the things that we're looking to at least find right. an answer for. Um, what do you all think we can do better um, to circumvent that because ultimately if we can find these answers faster for veterans there may be some things that we can implement for service members that are going in prior to their service that they can probably imp implement in basic training things like that so dr schwenke do you have any thoughts on that question um so it's uh, from, from what i thought i heard is that if we could accelerate the process of providing access to data and and, and uh, completing clinical trials and things of that such, information could be gotten to veterans more or any and active duty service members in time to initiate preventive action. Uh, that's I thought what I heard. So so it sounds like that's a question about how do we accelerate the. Um, the approval process. Um, um, that that uh, that actually um, 
there um, th th possibly some discussions about the steps and the approval and uh, among all stakeholders to see if there maybe there might be some flexibility that uh, uh, could arise uh, or well not arise a flexible that could be uh, developed or some sort of agreed on process that that could fast track uh, some things. Now, as I mentioned, uh, when for Dr. Coffey's question, there's certain things that are easy for our um, information system security office to sign off on. And that's one of the steps that to get anything uh, approved in, in human section protocol approved is the information system security officer ISSO has to sign off. And so if there's, you might say, an upfront agreement that um, uh, to expedite approvals, uh, data will be kept, say, for example, in the Vinci platform. Uh, that then is a quicker approval uh, because if it's some, it, the, the situation is if the requester makes a request to store data on a platform that is familiar to the ISSO and that is something that is he knows, they're all men, uh, it, he, he knows is approved by VA, then it can easily sign off. If it's something that he doesn't, he's unfamiliar with uh, or that he's not sure about, then uh, either he or we in the research service need to do some exploring and learn about the platform and, and give him the specs so then he can see uh, if it meets VA security requirements. So um, that's an example. So uh, if stakeholders were to get together, uh, have a meeting, say, this is our end goal. Uh, we want to uh, do a clinical trial uh, on XYZ. We want to do it in an efficient manner, and we want to design it in such a way that it can be quickly approved. What are our options? Uh, that, that potentially could lead to discussion of, well, where can we, uh, where would, where should we store the data so it can be most rapidly analyzed and, uh, and meet VA security requirements? Or if, if these are active duty military, uh, DOD uh, security requirements. I, I, I don't know their requirements, but I assume they're somewhat similar to, uh, to the VA's uh, requirements. So uh, I hope that kind of gives you a flavor of, of where uh, we might go as far as getting stakeholders together and trying to brainstorm um, solutions that would would either overcome barriers or uh, accelerate uh, steps, required steps. I think a couple, you know, themes I heard is, uh, is that, you know, it is important to have really a VA partner and ideally an investigator. Mm -hmm. It's not simply working with the research office as capable as they are. Um, it really helps to have a champion, someone mm -hmm. who's interested in your field or, you know, tangential field. So I think that's really important. Um, so obviously teams are important to create. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know. yeah. So I'd like to add to that. Uh, the speed from idea to the final output is dependent on two or three things. Number one, being able to evaluate your idea rapidly and come to a realization of the actual goals of the project, whether you're submitting it for an IRB approval or for clinical trial purposes. So I think access to a platform that does that, such as the MD clone platform uh, within the uh, innovation ecosystem has really helped that. Um, secondly, if you're thinking about, let's say, pursuing a clinical trial, in silico research using real-world data within um, the VA is important to, to inform such trials. And that, again, is possible uh, using platforms such as the MD clone platform. Thirdly, the quality of the data and the perception and understanding of the quality of the data uh, by the researcher is important to inform the speed uh, in, in, in how they decide these projects and submit to the IRB. The IRB approval process sometimes comes back with questions. Mm -hmm. And um, this direct access to data to clarify those questions is important. Lastly, I want to mention 
the data quality is important for and what's happening nowadays is people are thinking about AI and ML projects uh, for prediction and other purposes. Uh, and that data quality is important and the understanding of that by the clinical researcher themselves. Um, oftentimes when you have a middle person who understands the data but the clinical researcher doesn't, they find it difficult to take those projects from you know, the idea to the end. So all these things I think will, will help in shortening this process for clinical trials and other areas of innovation. Yes. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm still a little bit confused about how an, a non-VA person researcher would really get access. What I'm hearing is that there are lots of tools to develop your ideas, but those are only available if you're within that right. VA firewall, and yet there's a IRB process outside of that and then probably inside the VA as well. Um, so I guess I'm really wanting to know how does a non-VA affiliated researcher start this process? Let me try to answer the question from my perspective, and I'm sure that we have chiefs of research from both Phoenix and Tucson who could um, add to this. Um, I think the term non-VA is a bit, um, I, I would like to maybe ch change that to non-VA to become VA. So the typical process for a university investigator is to, to ask for without compensation credentials, i.e. become an unpaid VA employee. So you actually become, you have all of the rights and responsibilities of a VA investigator. So you're really no longer considered non-VA. Um, and so at that point, you're 100% VA. Now, you know, there may be uh, modalities of collaboration with external companies and, and universities and other things that are outside of that, truly external parties. I cannot speak to that. Um, but I think for the typical university investigator, it's simply to get VA credentials. Yes, there's, there, you can't put an IRB in until you're a un VA investigator. Yeah, and so that process, I think Dr. Schrenke said, takes approximately three to four months if the person is very diligent. Well, oh, no, I'd say a couple months. But, a couple but, months? But get, I was thinking of the getting from, uh, from the, uh, the, the submission to having the data in your hand um, or having okay. access to the yeah, stock yeah. in your hands, but so, having, yeah. So Tom, where, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanna add, um, during my presentation, I'll be discussing the steps that I've taken uh, from a non-VA researcher to um, where I'm at now with my full IRB execution. Um, so you'll be able to see each of those steps along the way. <laughs> go ahead, Vinod. So I'd like to add to that, and actually Dr. Dave has had the experience of, of doing that. Um, so yes, you, you, you got to get you know, these official credentials uh, to actually start the work. But even prior to that, um, it's for the person who doesn't have a VA credential yet. So for example, every major medical school is associated with the VA, okay? Um, and, and, th and, and uh, by dint of those uh, associations, almost all major universities have association with the VA. Now, it's, f it's, it's an opportunity for all these interested parties, be they data science people, epidemiologists, uh, healthcare, to get in touch with and find out who the PIs at the VA are and sort of correspond with their ideas, and then eventually uh, get onto the, the process for uh, getting under the fold of the, of the VA PI team. So I just wanted to add to that, there are several examples of that. Actually, um, all three of our presentations later this afternoon, we'll talk about how a you know, so-called non-VA person collaborated on the team uh, to, to right. Do the I work. think two out of our three uh, presenters today um, uh, 
you know, started off as non-VA um, uh, persons. And uh, we'll be hearing from them very shortly. Um, let me also let people know we do have a sign-up sheet. Um, if anyone's interested in uh, getting contacted by the Phoenix VA, the Tucson VA, or VA Arches MD clone. And we'll also be sending an electronic survey after the meeting to ask the same question. Um, I think we've had some great questions, and I think you're going to get some of these questions answered at the next round, uh, which will start at 10-15. Uh, uh, so enjoy your break.